Hi guys, I'm going to try and explain a couple of things about lakes and dyes and oil and polysorbate 80 and all of that crap that is constantly brought up in the groups and there is misconceptions and stuff that seem to persist in the groups for some reason, I'm not sure why. Um, anyway, so here we have yellow number five. This is a lake dye. This is, I have no idea if this is high dye content, medium or low dye content. Um, I assume it's medium or high, but I don't know. Um, generally high dye lakes only contain somewhere around 40% um, pure dye content at their highest, all right? So low dye is obviously going to be a lot less than that. But um, this here is straight dye powder. This is yellow number five again. So you can see the difference. Now this one I believe is around 88% pure dye content. All right. Um, so that's the difference in those two. This one's a lake. This one's a straight dye. Okay. They're the exact same color. Yellow number five. Okay. Now <coughs> what I'm going to show you first of all, pardon me, is the water solubility of the two of them. I'm going to put a little, I only want a little bit. I'm going to put about this much lake into this thingy of warm water. Now, as you can see, if you watch what happens there, it sort of floats down to the bottom. It's going to impart a little bit of color, but for the most part, lakes are water insoluble. They do have some um, matter that is slightly soluble or soluble but it's you know microscopic um, so for the most part these are going to float straight to the bottom and not really impart much color at all so that is your yellow lake in um, just a little shot glass of warm water okay now I'm going to get a tiny bit of my straight dye and by a tiny bit I mean a tiny bit so I'm only going to put this much of my straight dye into here. Now let's see what happens with this. As you can see, it floats down, but look at that. I mean, I'm sure all of you have played with food dye before and, um, you know, dye in various crafting things, but you can see it, it colors the water. Now I'm going to stir both of these. So first I will stir this one. Okay, so that, you know, makes it a slightly mandarinish kind of color. It's not too bad. I can still see, I don't know if I'll be able to show you. Where's my camera? Can you see in the bottom of that glass there is a little bit of powder? That is because lakes are not water soluble, all right? I don't care what people tell you. I don't care what suppliers tell you. Lake powders are not water soluble. They are insoluble in water. That is the whole point of them. Otherwise, they would be dyes, you know? I mean, they are, they're a lake dye, but they would be straight dye. What would be the point of this guy if he was water soluble? He'd be exactly the same as this one, you know? They wouldn't have been invented, you know? Okay, so here we go. This is the straight dye. As you can see, look at that. The water is actually now piss color. Well, if your piss is that color, you should probably go to the doctor, but. That's very bright. You should probably drink more water. Um, but here, as you can see, the sediment is settling in the lake dye, whereas the water, dye, water soluble straight dye has totally dissolved and has colored the water. Okay, so we've got lake. See the sediment? Not water soluble. And here we have dye. This is straight dye. Straight dye powder. They were both powders. Both the same color, but this one, clearly water soluble, not water soluble, water soluble. Okay, now that that is done, I'm going to move on to oil. In here we have, these are both the lake, okay? I know it looks dark in this, but it's because it's in the oil. So I have put some yellow lake into, on this side we have, um, a teaspoon of rice bran oil. That is all. Nothing else is in there. And I've put a tiny little dash 
of yellow five. As you can see, it's sunk to the bottom. It hasn't colored the oil, hasn't done anything. Why is this? Because lay powders are also oil insoluble. They're not oil soluble. I don't care what someone tells you, they aren't, okay? My bucket actually says on it, um, oil soluble. I don't know why, because they're not. They're actually not oil soluble, all right? I could go like this, it just spins around on the bottom and does nothing. This one has a teaspoon of rice bran oil, but I also added half a teaspoon of polysorbate 80. Now you can see instantly that the dye is looking a little bit strange in there. It's not quite the same as this one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stir them. Let me just wash these guys off. Because they have some dye powder on them. Now I'm going to stir these and show you so you can see that nothing really happens, okay? Now, this is going to mix in just like it did with the water, but again, we have the same issue. You can see the sediment still in there. It's imparting more color in the oil than it was in the water. That's because they're oil dispersible, okay? So they're going to be slightly more, you know, prone to imparting the color in the oil than they are in the water. Okay, now I'm going to stir this one as well. As you can see, it gets all streaky. It's instantly looking a little bit different to me. I don't know if you can tell on this. Sorry if you can't. So this one's the one with the poly 80 and this one's the one with just the oil. Okay, left is just the oil. Okay, now I'm going to bring these down. These have like warm, pretty warm water. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try. That's the poly 80. This is the oil. All right, I'll try and show you this now. I'm going to pour, this is if you make, this is a really simplistic example of making a batch of bath bombs with some oil in the recipe and your late colorant, all right? And, you know, assuming you're not using SLSA and you're not using poly 80, this is what's going to happen. Um, but this is going to be a drastic explanation of what's going to happen because obviously when you've got other ingredients, they're going to help disperse the colorant to a degree and they're also going to help disperse the oils a little bit. But anyway, I'm going to show you this now. I'm going to pour it in here. Now, see what happens. Obviously, and we know this was going to happen because I'm pouring oils into water and of course oils and water don't mix. So we end up with a slick on top. Now, if you're putting bath bombs in a bath, the slick's not going to be like this. It's not going to be so drastic and like obvious because your bicarb and your citric and everything is going to help spread it out. You'll end up with a slight slick on top, but it's not going to be like, you know, oranges floating in your tub. So this is you in the bath with your oily bath bomb, having a bath, splashing around. You might put a little bit of soap in, which will help. But I'm not going to put a little bit of soap in here. I'm just going to show you this for the hell of it. Splashing, splashing, having fun, having fun. Now, I'm not going to wait till this cools because I can't be bothered. But what happens is, of course, anything that's in the bath, like this spoon, is going to get coated in the oils as it comes out. My skin that I am so wonderfully cleaning in the bath, having a good time. This is so much fun, having a bath in moisturizing oils. Okay, now what's going to happen when I take my skin out? Of course, I'm going to be coated in oil, which is fine, except for the fact that the oil has all of that dye trapped in it. Now, again, this is a really over-the-top explanation. It's not going to be exactly the same for your bath bombs, but this is, this is a simplistic view of what's happening. All right, so you're getting coated in oils that have dye in them and the same thing is going to happen around the rim of your tub especially like an acrylic tub or whatever the heck they're made out of porcelain I don't know um, you will end up with a ring around your tub especially as the water cools it's going to harden the dyes are going to sit there they're going to be dyeing that beautiful white tub of yours um, now generally this can be washed off with a surfactant like detergent or anything like that but in extreme cases if it's sitting there for too long and there's too much dye there, it, it could stain the tub and you'll need bleach to clean it off. Now I'm going to wash my hands and I'm going to show you what happens when you put the polysorbate one in. And 
also going to show you my hands right now. I don't know if you can see that. There, here. I am slightly jaundiced because obviously there's still oil on me. I would need soap to get that off properly. I'm going to wipe it down with a towel because most people aren't going to scrub themselves crazy with soap in the tub. I know that my kids don't really. They just sit in a bit of soap. So I can still see yellow on me. I don't know if you can, especially in the creases and stuff. And the longer this stays on me, of course, it's going to stain a bit more, but it will generally come off after, you know, a few washes. Okay, so that's your oil. Now let's try this guy here. This is going to be the polysorbate version. Now instantly you can see that's a little bit different. Not quite the same as the other one. Okay, so we've still got a bit of a slick here, but... You can see that it's wanting to spread out. It's not um, forming those globules of oil. So what happens when we're playing? Oh, I'm having such a great bath. This is fabulous. Splash, splash, I'm taking a bath. I don't know. I don't really see that in the bath. I don't even have baths. I have showers. Okay, so we're having a bath. Having a bath is so much fun. Fun. This is great. I'm in yellow water. I feel like I've peed myself in the tub. Oh, splash. Oh, oh, splash. Okay, I'm getting a bit carried away. But there you go. Look at that. Perfect. The polysorbate Ada, of course, is a emulsifier. So it's going to, you know, emulsify everything. It's going to make the water and the oil mix together. I can still see a tiny slick. I probably didn't use enough poly AD, but whatever. And look, I just dropped some in there and look, it's doing weird things to the oil um, so yeah you're not gonna have a crazy slick it's not gonna stick to the edge it's not gonna stick to your skin it's just going to mix all of that oil and all of the colorant through the bath evenly um, you will find that uh, surfactants should also do the job fairly well if you use enough but you will have to test to see how much surfactant you need especially if you're using large quantities of dye um, same goes for straight dye powder. It's not just lakes. Straight dyes can get stuck in the oils and they will sit at the edge of the tub and they will be even worse because they're twice as concentrated as you saw earlier. Um, so, I mean, the bottom line is you need to disperse those oils when you're using lakes. Otherwise, yeah, look, this, I mean, it looks nice. It's getting yellow slowly, but those oils are going to solidify at some stage and Look at all that dye. I mean, look how much of that dye is stuck in those oils. That's that's your entire dye content right there, stuck in the oils that just is looking for somewhere to dye. Ah, not dye as in expire. I mean, dye, like color. It wants to color your stuffs. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's the difference. That's no polysorbate 80, and this is polysorbate 80. I know that it's not exactly the same as if you're shoving it into a bath bomb mix because there are other ingredients at play. But if you don't have at least a surfactant or polysorbate 80, polysorbate 80, by the way, is actually a mild surfactant anyway, but it's also a really kick-ass emulsifier. So it's going to mix everything together and disperse it through your tub. It's going to break down those oils and disperse them. You'll still feel moisturized, but not slick and greasy. Um, Surfactants also break them down. It's the same thing they do when you're washing your dishes and you have a really fatty baking dish and you pour detergent all over it. It breaks down the fats and allows you to wash them off. Otherwise, you're just scrubbing them around the pan going, oh, this is disgusting and gross. How do I get rid of this? So detergents do the same thing. I don't use polysorbate 80 in mine and you've seen how bright my bath bombs are. I use a lot of straight dye. Um, Though I tend to try and hold back because I don't like using too much in the bathtub. But I do use a lot compared to a lot of people. So I use SLSA to break mine down. I don't even use polysorbate 80 at the moment. So you can uh, stop it happening with SLSA. Though I haven't tested the theory too much with the lake dyes. Only a couple of times I think I've done it with some red lake dye. But um, yes, the bottom line is you need to disperse... The colorants you need to disperse the oils otherwise you're going to end up with a, a very large issue of color in your tub 
Um, I hope that explained a few things about dyes and lakes and why you need to use polysorbate 80. I would have done a little test with SLSA, but I totally forgot. So, um, too bad, I guess. Okay, bye-bye. I've got slightly yellow hands.